All right. All right. Let's start talking about music again because that was yeah. really fun. Sure. Or do we get we got some housekeeping to do. Well, first. we have a little bit of housekeeping. Well, we'll introduce gotta, you guys. We'll <laughs> stay in order. <laughs> well, while I'm making notes, Slow though, down. real quick uh, about music, I, I've got a thousand music questions for you. By Throw the way, and, and this will come up through the podcast. Yeah. But uh, this just this morning, I was listening to um, to Iggy Pop, uh, the MC5, and and who else comes from that town? Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, Alice Cooper. That's right. That's Ted right. Nugent, Bob <laughs> Seger. Right. So what's 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 going on? Without me poisoning the water, what's going on in Detroit? Yeah, why? There's something what, what in there, man. Going on, There's yeah. some, you know, I, that's a that's a really good question, and it's a mystery that we all want to know. Because I mean, in the '90s, I moved to Seattle because I'm like, what is happening here? Why? is there this this music coming out of this place mm-hmm. and it's just there's just some there's an energy there there's a there's a there's a creativity that's happening i mm-hmm. mean uh, i mean think about it i mean even milwaukee being the place of where harley davidson was built i mean don't you feel great riding your harley around this place you, you feel a different energy i know i do yeah so i don't know why it's birmingham alabama or why it's detroit or why it was seattle or even san francisco or london i do know that there's Something is going around, and 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 it's it's a it's just a moment of time that this this uh, struck four lads or you know these this record label that just found this sound that was working and it just vibrates with all of us. So, and and it's and it's something that that worked so well that you you know it's it's last it's going to last forever. Those bands, those songs, that music, think, and I think they, we all strive for that. Will they keep yeah. putting? Will they keep putting folks out? You know, will that. Will that feeling and that vibe transcend? I you hope know? so, man. Me too. I really do. I think we all talk about the youth and we try to make sure. I was, you know, of course, I'm looking at Instagram today and there's this kid sitting on its mini bike or on his mini bike or the, you know, putting a couple ramps up on some logs and jumping your BMX bike and you realize that's how I grew up. And if, are they getting that same? thing my kids are yeah and is is so what's going to happen to the ones that aren't like what's you know when it's just the iphone or the or the video games entertaining them so we just hope that there's still that and there will be those kids getting that same Look at organic thing that's happening yeah that happened to make us all the rad people we are today yeah for sure <laughs> but but you're, you're talking you're, you're coming from a mindset of a, of a limited time and space of a What's our generation? Are we generation I'm X? Generation X. Yeah. My natural hair color. Yeah, exactly. Your parents were watching you jump logs and BMX bikes, and yeah. they were like, you know what that boy needs is to be in the field like I was when I was a boy. He no. needs to learn how hard work is and, and how we used to pick corn at six years old. But now look at him. He's out here riding his bike. Nah. My point is we, we you're having a generational view of, of things. Yeah. yeah. Is it too narrow? I, yeah. I grew up <clears throat> with – ping pong when it first showed up on the tv and atari and my dad had zero interest in that stuff if i was out there on my bmx bike or building a tree fort or stepping on a nail from a log he was proud of me like good for you good you're outside getting stay out of the house there's nothing happening here Mm -hmm. i'm watching the news and you're in the way and beat it yeah you know that's you know that's where we're not because we give kids um you know, hang with your folks and watch the iPad and, and do your thing. And, and when you got to nowadays, because I do feel like it is a more dangerous world and we've got to watch out for our kids. But where I grew up in the mountains, it was, it was, we were out until the sun went down. It's still like that. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't think I'm Gen X, but the, you know, I think that my generation is still yeah. like that. It might be, it's probably going to be less uh, prevalent yeah. than your generation, but it's like, it's still there. There's I'm overlap. T- totally yeah, tell us about Gen Z. <laughs> yeah, not a problem, Scott. <laughs> I think the kids, and then especially some next? of the younger kids, I see some of these newer kids building bikes. You know, my daughter was born in 95, and I, and her the kids that are her age, he's like Patrick Murphy, for instance. I mean, that kid's bike he built is insane. Yeah. And all these builders I'm seeing coming up, and the people I follow online, they're amazing. And it's great to see what's happening going on in their head and what they're putting together. Mm-hmm. So I think definitely it's going to, it's happening. I don't think we need to worry. I just no. think our job is, and you know, like you're doing too, Warren, is just to teach what we 
found that worked for us and then let them figure it out for themselves and then they turn it into their thing. Yeah, throw a bunch exactly. of shit at the wall like, and see what yeah, sticks. Yeah. It's like Greta Van Fleet. All of us hate them because they sound like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> but my daughter loves them because it's her Led Zeppelin. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. And I don't hate Greta Van Fleet, but you know what I mean? You've made yeah. that comparison. Yeah. They're rad, but yeah. it's yeah. like, we, you know, that's the difference. Let it be their thing. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate the tangent we took there. Yeah. Starting with the energy of Detroit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and energy and us ending on a, on a generational gap. Well, we but were it, supposed to go on a tangent because D- Nugent's from Detroit, so that's what he would do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. melt faces. Talk about a tangent. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about well, a walking tangent. But, but you tangent. did, I want to call you just on one quote, and then we're going to start housekeeping. Yes. You said there's, no, there, there's nothing to do in the house. And, and I just left here. I, I have another son. I just left yeah. here. I mean, he very well could have been looking at the Japanese stock market in live time. You know what I mean? And he was on a headset. He's probably talking to someone in Bonn, yeah. Germany. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it isn't that there is nothing going on in the, in the house. It's that we don't understand it. Sure, well, there, true. but it's different now because we didn't have the internet and sure. yeah. all that stuff. We didn't, you know, we played video games, but we weren't online talking to our friends while we were playing like a multiplayer game. Sure. Right? Yeah. And as it turns out, there's really, it sounds like there's nothing wrong with that, you know? No. Just they're not, they're not getting outside as much as we did, but... I have I, their way. Like I, I played video games when I was a yeah. kid, a lot of them. Yeah. And then I fa- kind of phased out and then got back in in college and phased back out. Yeah. And now I'm back into them with my son, you know? <laughs> so there's like this, it, you know, you just have to be willing to be flexible and try it. Like I have a blast playing with him and we talk shit to each other and <laughs> he gets really mad at me and I get very flustered and like uh, self-conscious because like the kid whoops my ass. And I should be whooping his ass. Sure. <laughs> so it's like you're using the video game as a medium, though, to build a relationship with yeah. your son. Yes. Yeah. So we That's talk about it. Like we strategize before we go and play because we can play on teams. Say, Max, you got to wait for me, buddy. You know, I'll be the sniper guy in the back. Okay. I'll stay up on the hill. <laughs> I know exactly what game you're talking Just about. Just don't go bombing into these fights without me, dude. I like, I got to have your back. I got to see what's going on. I got to <laughs> survey the land. And, and you don't take get too fucking long. mad at me. You, know? you take too long, <laughs> yeah. right? Like yeah. myself, switching yeah. from the sniper yeah. to the angry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look for what? Where's X? Get the damn card, Dad. Go revive <laughs> me. I'm like, ah. <laughs> get very flustered. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's different video games. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thanks for the brief uh, interlude on music. I got a ton of music questions because I, this, you are our first, maybe second, bona fide certified uh, rock rock star. Yeah. yeah, and I'm really it. curious Thank about for that. about the uh, about what goes on behind the curtain. I because got a you're a, a closeted promoter, I because I would I wanted to be a rock star. That's and I I think about it. I'm going to get into it in a little bit. We we have it. We have we have some uh, some concepts to to run through. Yeah, we have we have a, we have a routine here. You can't uh, let go. Of we have routine. a tradition here. We got to yeah. pause this. Hang on, hang on. We have to start. This is episode number thirty eight. It'll be thirty nine. Episode 39, uh, Mama Tried Flat Out Friday uh, weekly podcast. And we've been doing a great job of keeping on weekly. I'm really proud that we haven't flubbed that yet. Yeah. Many things that we have flubbed, and this one seems to be yeah. sticking. Yeah. Well, there's some wins. <laughs> we always start with a little bit of housekeeping, Chuck. Just a little bit, just to see where our head's at, just to make sure that our, our viewers are up to date with what we have going on. Um, I think many of our viewers are hanging on to some announcements that we're going to be announcing very shortly for what to do with their summertime. Like, what events do we have coming up here, Warren? Um, 120th. Okay, what's the Harley-Davidson Homecoming? Okay, yep, yep. And, and our in kind of in correlation with that is our um, our um, exhibit at the Harley-Davidson Museum will be, be launching. So that's exciting. Yeah, it's um, really exciting. Yeah, and then follow that with Sturgis and... A mama tried Flat Out Friday retrospective, if, if you will. Ugh. What do you mean? When? <laughs> Where? At, at the Harley 120? Yeah. Yeah. No, at the exhibit. At the, oh, at, at the, the museum. Exhibit. Oh, the, like, well, yeah. There's, it's, we've been kind of kept in the dark. We have no idea what the fuck they're doing. It's going to look like, yeah, but we've given them a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm so glad they didn't climb up my ass yeah. or your ass yeah. to like really get in there. Like It's their take on what we, we do. do. Wow. Yeah. That sounds exciting. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. And to have it here. have it live during the one during the big homecoming is is the best. Like, it, that's a special time in Milwaukee. I really, really have a good time. Mm-hmm. It was the only time I'd ever looked at my um, tour schedule and saw that I had this time off. Yeah, and I was like, yes, I can go to this to, I was to the 120th. Yeah. I'll oh, be that's here, good. Man. Have you been to an anniversary yet? 
No. I have not. Man, I, like, I, I used to do it when I was a kid, you know. Yeah. First getting my motorcycle license, I crossed the border and come up here and party with everyone. That's and nice. Every five years, it's just a giant blowout, so it's pretty special. What, 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 that what, was like, what, in the 110th when you <laughs> got your license? It's probably somewhere in there. <laughs> what, what what would you recommend? Uh, to, of course, there's all of the concerts and all of the, all of the things, but what my, would you my, recommend? My personal does? recommendation would would be to be flexible and bomb the city. Go to all the neighborhoods. Go to Bayview. Hit Water Street. Hit Brady Street. Hit all the places where you know the local Fifth pubs Ward. and bars are going to be out and go and out to force. the burbs. Yeah, like it's. Just immerse yourself in the street, you know, and, and get in where you fit in because it's a little bit of a lawlessness that happens. And uh, it's it's a special time to, to really experience what Milwaukee is because, you know, you don't have to be a motorcyclist to come out and have a good time. It's it's everywhere, That's true. you know, and people are just stoked. And the influx of people and a different kind of people that show up to Milwaukee is really special. And get to run wild a little bit. Yeah. It's a little bit of the, they take the handcuffs off. Yeah. Yeah, go go frequent all the Scotts bars and see what Kristen and Leslie have mm-hmm. cooked, cooked up. up. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, and we'll we'll get more to the specific of what Flat Friday and Mama Tried is doing later. Just follow our social media. Yeah, yep. yeah. We're we're gonna be we're stationed at our, like our our headquarters or our hub is gonna be at the museum. So we'll have a, a booth there that we'll be selling and ha- merch and shaking hands and hanging out and drinking beers and like a place to kind of center ourselves we have a bike show over there that's permanent through the weekend and then we'll have one like a pop-up bike show on saturday and we're gonna hang out with all the other folks that are coming into town and you know we have the boys from prism and and uh, jeff from v2 and visionary and pat from let sled and i'm sure dean will be in from dice and, yeah haywood from detroit yeah detroit randy um you know and, and everybody's gonna come out of the woodwork right it's it's gonna be pretty awesome yeah it's going to be the Mom and Trident Friends show. Mm-hmm. We're just going to be hosts. It, and then in addition to that, there is a bunch of mini bike races around town. Scott, the war um, you, run. The war run is in town. That's right. These mini bike races. Uh, Scott, you you had made the poster uh, for announcing all of our mini bike races for the summer. And I have to, I, we haven't talked about this, but we're going live. Mm-hmm. I got to add a bunch of new dates to that. Oh. Seems like there's a there's a bit of a demand. That's a, well, that's good. That's <laughs> so, positive. Yeah, keep it going. So that's really good. You're following on social media, and you're like, "What's he talking about?" Well, very shortly, within a couple of days, we'll have it. Um, I'll just white it out. Yeah, we're gonna put we're gonna start putting out the Sturgis stuff too, and and all that to give folks time to uh, get their plans sorted, and you what? know, try to try to get folks to stick with us for that big week, and mm-hmm. lots coming up. Let's give a shout out to Big Scott in the War Run for uh, he's a promote he gets the promoter of the year I think for promoting that race at Ukes. Yeah, he got oh, how many yeah. over a hundred signups already? Hundred mini bikes. Yep. Yeah, a pretty it's dope. Good job. It's gonna be wild. Yeah, good job. Uh, okay, thanks for sitting through that, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say congrats on all the success you hey, guys thanks. are having. I mean. I was at Mama Tried this last year and was just completely blown away and just energized with the amount of where people coming from all over the country for this event in the middle of winter in <laughs> Milwaukee, which is such a brilliant time to put the, the show on. It is like kind um, of perfect, actually. And a great venue as well. So Yeah, it is good. Yeah, Thank man. you very much. Oh, yeah, Thank you very sure. much. Do you know the do you know the Eagles ballroom in uh, your rock and roll life? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've played there several times, yeah. What other yeah, what before uh, can we just jump in and start ahead. talking it's about okay music? Now. Yeah. Yeah, it's not <laughs> done. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well we should in, do a proper introduction. Oh right, yeah. Uh, this is Chuck a uh, uh, Garrick. Do you say yeah. Garrick? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did good. And uh and well I've established you're a rock star. <laughs> Hold on to that resume. Yeah. This is a show about motorcycle people. Yeah. Are you yeah. a motorcycle person? Yeah. 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 Chuck, Chuck's Very got the bug. So. Mm-hmm. I got, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I've got attacked and I'm yeah. into it, man. And it's <laughs> awesome. It is one of the things that has saved my rock and roll life. And I needed to get my hands dirty. I needed something to do. And then uh, motorcycles came into my life again and just totally just gave me a new spirit. How did that entree work? How yeah, did you... man. I got hired <clears throat> by a company to be a rep in Sturgis and I've played Sturgis many times I've been there and I've you know don't get me wrong as a kid I grew up my dad was a motorcycle builder and and when I came into the world he, he really slowed that down became a fireman and took care of the family and my godfather still carried on the tradition Bianchi Robert Bianchi at Bianchi Motors in San Francisco still to this day 
great motorcycle builder. <clears throat> so it was always around. But as a kid, we did, you know, BMX and, and mini bikes and things like that, like most children. But as an adult or as a young teenager, music was my thing. That's mm -hmm. what I really grabbed onto. And that took me through my whole life. And uh, but it was Sturgis where I got hired to be a rep for this company. And I'm a person who sort of just believes in manifesting what you want. I, I do that a lot. I do a lot of meditation. I do a lot of just visualizing where I want my life to be. And before that happened, I thought, I got to get back into motorcycles. As I was driving down the freeway, I'd see them, you know, and I just wondered, like, what are these? What is that? What does this do? I, I want to get back on bikes. So when I got to Sturgis, my mission was not this company, but I got to get on a bike. And I saw that the owner of this company, he brought with him a uh, <clears throat> Triumph Speedmaster. And I instantly asked him, hey, what are you doing with that bike? I brought my helmet, my boots, gloves, <laughs> everything with me. Not thinking, you know, knowing that I'm going to do something. I'm going to ride a bike, right? Sturgis. He said, oh, man, I brought it, but I don't think I'm going to have time to ride. He says, do you ride? I said, yeah, and it's been years. So he, I didn't have, I didn't even have my license at the time, you know, to drive, but he threw me the keys and he said, Hey man, go for it anytime you want. So I just, that was it. I just took off and just started riding that thing. And, and, um, it just, the feeling was like, ah, oh, that's, yeah. that's the thing I needed. This yeah. is what I need yeah. in my life to, to get me back and being excited about where I'm at. Yeah. Recentered. It, I had to, you know, I've been you know, sleeping on a tour bus for 20 plus years and it's a great life. But, you know, I'm a guy who likes to, you know, get your, get my hands dirty. Everybody just thinks I'm, I'm a rock star and I can't tune my own guitar, which, which is true. But I, you know, <laughs> that's not true, but, you know, I don't set up my own gear. I don't do anything. It's, you know, it's like, ugh, you know, you're just, you just show up and throw some shapes on stage, which is awesome. Don't get me wrong. It's amazing. I'm not complaining, but I needed something else. And uh, breaking down on the side of the road was one of the things I was looking t forward to the most. Yeah. You know? How old were you when you had this this uh, re re energized? Just the last couple of years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just several years ago where this sort of became a thing for me. So so nice. growing up, uh, you, you had motorcycles around the house. There was a vocabulary in the house with your yeah. father yeah. about motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And he was in the Harleys. He was in the what at that time? Yeah. So as a young age, my dad grew up in San Francisco, California, right in the Mission District there on Church Street, and Next to the house was <clears throat> um, a gas station where there was a lot of the bikers. And in those days, it was the Gypsy Jokers. And I don't even know if the Hells Angels were around then, but they may have been forming at that time. But um, my dad was a mechanic. He loved it. So he wanted to build what he told my grandfather was a scooter. So him and his best friend, Robert Bianchi, who's my godfather, they, they went in the back alley there on Church Street and next to my aunt's house and um, decided to build this scooter. But they were trading parts with the bikers, and that's where my dad and <laughs> my godfather built their first knucklehead. Oh, rad. Nice. And it's rad. And I'll show you guys pictures of it. And uh, my godfather, I mean, my go uh, grandfather at the time walks over, sneaks up on him to go look at this scooter they're building. And <laughs> you know, it, that's the biggest fucking scooter I've ever seen. How, uh, how old were they? So they were in their teens. Okay. Yeah, 15, 16 years old, yeah, just figuring it out. And you can see it in the picture of the bike. It's it's pretty, it's amazing to see. Um, and <clears throat> my dad loved, he just loved building. So from that point on, when as he got older into his early 20s, he met my mom and they were riding around and in uh, motorcycle groups and in clubs and just, just hanging out and having a good time. My dad was a person a lot of guys like to have around because he was very knowledgeable. And he was also the, the guy that you could say, hey, uh, I need you to uh, come down with me. Some shit's going down. <laughs> and uh, we're going to leave it in five minutes. And my dad would say, who's driving? <laughs> you know, he wouldn't ask any questions. So it was fun. I, I can only imagine what their life was like back in those days. Right. <clears throat> and uh, But as soon as he met my mom and she had four kids already and I came into the world, it was time to get serious. As you know, right, Warren? Everybody, yeah. well, whoever has kids knows that. Yes, sir. When the kids come along, life changes and for the better. For yeah. me anyway, and I'm sure for you guys, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Wait, so how many siblings do you have? I have four bro uh, two brothers, two sisters. Wow. Yeah, and they were a little bit older than me, so they had seen that's more cool. of that lifestyle yeah. than I had even seen. Because by the time I came around, 
we had moved to Lake Tahoe, California, and that's okay. where my dad was. A uh, he would <clears throat> get into he would fix transmissions and things like that, and TV repairman. Then got a job at the Lake Tahoe Fire Department. And that's okay. when life kind of changed that's for us. Cool. It became a little bit easier. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and then we would build you know mini bikes and just work on stuff around the house, and then BMX bikes, of course, but. Uh, the did, music bug, like I said earlier, is the one that mm -hmm. got me at an early age. Did it? Did having the older siblings, like with their musical interests, like the records that they were buying and stuff, like did yeah, that help like, usher you into? Like, the... Yeah, I have one brother in particular, Randy, who uh, um, he was the one who I was listening to. I can't even remember what it was. It must be like Monster Mash or some shit, you know. And he kind of came into my room and said, "Hey, you should check this out," and gave me a CD of Ted Nugent. And that was my first like record, and I put it in, and I was like, "Well, and I played trumpet at the time, I remember." And um, and he goes, "You know, Ted Nugent's coming into town with Humble Pie, and want me to take you down to the show?" And I'm like, "Yeah." My parents would not let me hang out with my brothers and sisters because they were just rebels and ruthless right. and constantly right. running away. Yeah, and, you know, just Wild. troublemakers. Yeah. You know? So, but Randy was the one brother that. It was cool. So he took me to go see uh, Ted Nugent. Was Humble that your Pie. first concert? Yeah. Kick ass. And then that was it. I could tell you everything. What was playing on the PA, That how the drums looked. and the I snuck what right up front. What kind of space? Huh? Was there seating? Was it a ballroom? No, it was a general it? admission, man. I mean, it was like, <clears throat> it was what concerts were built on. I mean, it was like one security guard in a barricade. And, and uh, I think, you know, my mom and her girlfriend came as well, and they both snuck in, like, vodka and orange juice and <laughs> sat up in the seats. And, and I just ran up front and just stood there and watched for the first time a rock and roll show. I was, like, 13. Don't kick ass. And it was cool. It was first time I heard, like, Dirty Deeds. That was coming on over the PA. Wait, so you were right up front. Did you, I, did you dude, get your face melted? I was he claims right 100 in faces. front of the PA. <laughs> and I just stood there and I'll, I'll never forget it and I was tiny I was like god man maybe four foot eight or something and, and I just was such a tiny kid and I, I actually stood and sat on the barricade because there was no secure was one dude he was getting stoned you know it didn't, yeah. it didn't nobody was everybody yeah. was just having a good time and Ted Nugent's right there and I was I I, I wish I had videotape of what mm -hmm. was happening with me everybody else was stoned and party and I was something was happening to this kid. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, I just, I'm seeing something that nobody else is seeing and that's what I want to do, you know? And it, it was happening with every note and everything because Ted was so, he was another guy that had this, he did, still does, but he's got the spirit of, mm -hmm. of rock and roll in him. And at that time, it was real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's wearing a, you know, loincloth and swinging around. Yeah, yeah. It was Fox just. Taylor. Did he have a double? Did he have a double neck guitar? No, he had no. the. He had that blonde Gretsch hollow body okay. that just was just crazy, and it was so loud, and he was leaning up against the speakers, and it just oozed everything that yeah. was rock and roll, like that yeah. Detroit we were talking. It was just everything. It was just sweat, and I remember the next day, I. I wore my shirt and smelt like weed, and I just felt all cool yeah. going into school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it, man. I, I stopped at that moment. Have you, in your travels, have you been able to tell Ted that story? Uh, absolutely. Really? He said, awesome. Yeah, good kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if yeah. I had a dime for every time, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not only right. have I told it to him, and I told it to him at a, a long before I even said anything, but I, uh, I, I, I've jammed with Ted several times and I've refused to tell him the story, <laughs> you know, because one time he told me we jammed and did a couple of tunes at some charity event. And, and after the jam, he comes up to me and he goes, Chuck, you've got the spirit of the buffalo in you. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. Right. But that's a compliment. Yeah. yeah. I was like, shit, that's fucking Ted Nugent. All right. Spirit of the buffalo. Hell yeah. So later on, a couple of years later, uh, he was, uh, uh, gosh, he might have been here or uh, in Nashville. I don't know. He was in Reno, Nevada. And, and I went to see him. And I had my wife with me at the time. And she's looking great. Everything. We go backstage. And we're talking to Ted. And I said, hey, blah, 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 we're talking. So the end of the night, I said, hey, remember I jammed with you? You told me I uh, had the spirit of the buffalo in me, right? And he goes, yeah, I remember that. He goes, now take that spirit and go put it in her. <laughs> 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 so you know, it's just he's just always on. He's one of those guys. Rowdy, you know? yeah. yeah. All right.
but so, uh, Chuck, tell me about school. Yeah, how high were you school? in school? Yeah, terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I was awful at it. I, I was just, I was too, like most boys, I think in that era. Like you either, I just couldn't quite get it. <clears throat> I, I, um, I always felt behind, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, I was always made. I was always good. I had friends and and. Uh, but I never really, there was no subject that I really latched on to, mm-hmm. you know, aside from anything that was like a, um, an elective. Like I loved wood shop and metal shop and, and sports, mm-hmm. you know. So that's why when music became a thing, it was like, oh, I kind of found a reason that I, you know, got into the orchestra playing trumpet or music in, in, in high school where I could meet the, meet the right people and, and become kind of popular in a way by doing something I love to do instead of just showing up and drinking and getting stoned and, and, and hanging out at the party. I was there because my band was going to jam some Black Sabbath songs or whatever. So you started a band in high school? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What was the band called? Oh, man. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't even know if we had a name. We, we, we were always minus a singer. Oh, no, we did. We had a name. We were called Lock Haven. Okay. okay. You, you guys played parties? Yeah, yeah. We played keggers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we became Lock Haven when we found a singer. And I remember I saw the band. Talk about manifesting. This is a great story. I, I was 16, and I played bass. Um, I had two neighbors <clears throat> next to me, John and Mike Kokoris. Mike Kokoris could play guitar at 16 years old, like Eddie Van Halen, Jimmy Page. He played it all. He was amazing. And his brother John was the drummer, so they needed a bass player, so I bought a bass. Learned to play it. And, um, and I was terrible, of course, but I learned. And as time went by, Mike took off and moved out of the house. And uh, there was another band that played in the, at the Kager. So at 16, I saw this band play and they were playing Black Sabbath and, you know, and Van Halen and Judas Priest and doing all the harmonies. And I stood on the stairwell of this house and I just watched these guys play. And uh, it later got shut down because of the cops and i remember the cop looked at me and he says how how old are you kid and i'm like i'm 16 he goes jesus i i probably look nine years old you know (laughs) and i was sober i never really partied partied hard when i was a kid but i remember seeing that band and thinking if i could get into that band i could be i can make it this is it Mm -hmm. and later on down the road the bass player that they had tragically he lost his life and all of a sudden these guys called me up because I was just at Lake Tahoe. How many bass players are there, you know? <laughs> Maybe two. And so they asked me to play in their band, and, and I thought I had made it. There were these guys where we had a singer, we had guitar players that could do the a leads band? and the yeah. harmonies, and we had a band called Lock Haven, and <laughs> we're going to go take over the world. And it was, it was awesome, but it was definitely music that saved my life because I had no um, direction when it came to academics really mm-hmm. i mean i was interested in music engineer you know recording engineering and and that was it mm-hmm. you know so you said you That's had a lot cool. of questions for me as yeah. long as there's no math or, <laughs> you know <laughs> any of that stuff i'm good i'm the same i'm the <laughs> yeah, same right we'll, we'll fo- follow just well, it's a fascinating story but I, and, and i'm curious personally not even for any viewers so what happened next? You're in this local keg band. Yeah. Lock Haven. Lock Haven. In, in, you guys in have a Lake van. Tahoe. You guys have, you guys have a van. Yeah, we decided we were going to move to L.A., right? So okay. this is it. So you, have a, you, you so, know a few covers. Yeah, we do some covers. Now we're, now we're 18 and everybody's going, okay, what are you going to do with your life? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I want to go to L.A. and I want to go to music school. So there was a music school called Dick Grove School of Music. And I worked as a waiter, uh, as a, as a busboy, really, at a steakhouse. And I would work there, and I would save all my tips, and um, and uh, and all my money. I'd save it all, and um, with my high school money that I got from graduating, and the money that I saved up it was four thousand dollars. So that's what I had in my pocket to go to music school, and it was for a one year program. It was like I think it was like forty five hundred bucks or whatever. So I was moving to L.A. to go to music school. Lock Haven, they are all coming with me. I was the only one who showed up to L.A. because <laughs> it, it was a long drive. I'll never forget. Our car broke down. It, I had a, uh, a Dodge Omni. The transmission went out, and we Damn. made a stop in San Diego, Ramona, and uh, stayed at the drummer's uncle's house and had to hitchhike into town for a couple of weeks until this transmission got fixed. 
And by the time the transmission got fixed, those guys were like, you know, I think they just got a little nervous about life and how right. hard it's going to be because right. we had nowhere to go in L.A. Mm -hmm. Right. So no I, friends there. Nobody. I knew no not context, a soul. No context. Nothing. Nobody. Just yeah. the school that was there. That was it. So I'd signed up for the school. I needed to go there. I needed to get a job and get a place to stay. So I pulled in to Studio City, California, where the school was in North Hollywood. Uh, there was in uh, on Ventura Boulevard. There were uh, monthly hotels that weren't too bad. So I got one for a month. Uh, Got a job where I made $450 a month. Got an apartment that was $450 a month. Um, that was my rent. And then just the, let, let the rest follow. And to this day, this is a true story, I got a job at a music store. It's called Music Plus where they um, rented v VHS, not DVD, but VHS. And you sold vinyl there and stuff. And I walked in after I got hired. And this guy greets me and he says, hey, man, uh, my name's Chris. What's yours? And I said, I'm, I'm, my name's Chuck. And he goes, where do you live? And I said, oh, I'm staying over at the Top Hat Motel right down the street. He goes, oh, I know that place. I go, cool. So I meet this guy, Chris, long haired guy. Go do my job. I go back to the hotel and about 15 minutes, I put my bag down. I hear this. I, what? I open the door and it's Chris. He's got a 12 pack of beer. He goes, hey, man, thought maybe we could have a couple beers together. Chris is Chris Latham, brother Latham, in my band now. Wow. No way. Bisto Blanco. Yeah, he was, he's been my best friend ever since. That's wow. great. You know? No way. So I knew I was at the right place, right? That's cool. You know? Yeah. So, That's cool. So that, there you go. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> well, so did you graduate from this school? Yeah, I graduated from Lake Tahoe High, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, from the, the music school. Oh, from yeah, the, yeah. yeah, from the, yeah, Dick Grove School of Music. I graduated one year later. you have a degree later. in what? In, in, in engineering? No, no. So I had a degree. Well, not even a degree. It was a certificate, right? It was mm -hmm. a trade school. So I learned to play the bass guitar there better. Yeah. So I had teachers like Joe DiBartolo, who was a bass player for the, the Tonight Show. Dean Taba, who was a studio bass player. Um, Rocco from Tower of Power would come in and teach. And <clears throat> I was a kid who knew Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath and Judas Priest. And all of a sudden I'm learning jazz and fusion mm -hmm. and country and blues. And I was just overwhelmed and I loved it. And it was awesome. And I played my bass every day and worked at a music store and, and I just honed in my craft, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and, and yes. uh, learned more about what being a musician was all about. So somewhere soon after, there must be a big break. How's this rock and roll, no. story, this rock and roll story get started here? <laughs> so then it was the 80s in, on Sunset Strip, spandex and makeup, which was not my jam. I, I, I you know, growing up in, the, in Lake Tahoe, I would go see bands. And the bands that I saw were Bay Area bands like uh, Metallica and Slayer and all these other bands as well were coming through there. So I was more of like a Hesher mm -hmm. in you were into the thrash scene. I was just yeah, I like Sabbath it and was I was darker. It was darker. Yeah, music. I was darker, yeah. man. I didn't get it, but I, I I did it and I wore the you'll find pictures of me up there. I wore the denim stone wash jeans and the Jeez, hairspray sir, and the whole we thing. Why not? We you know, I look did. back and I go, damn I fine you know, good. <laughs> but there i got into a band called velocity and it was uh two two brothers and um they were great and they were good good guys and we we toured all around the, or not toured but played all around the sunset strip and um thrash metal no no we were more like pop rock we were more like white lion or rat or okay. something you know and okay and uh and did got you guys have a shtick was like what was the yeah our drummer our singer used to wear these stonewashed we all wore matching stonewashed <laughs> outfits <laughs> okay. the velocity yeah makes it seem like it's gonna be yeah and, and our hair and our singer was really good looking his name was skip you know <laughs> and uh his real name's daniel and he's he's an attorney now you know and and yeah, everybody was just really handsome and, you know, and looked good with our shirts off kind of vibe. And we all wore the matching, but we all had our a little different look. So like okay. I had sewn wash with white leather uh, laces on the mm -hmm. sides and Daniel wore denim white or, or stone wash uh, chaps with, <laughs> with black uh, so spandex like, pants on behind him, you know, because his ass <laughs> looked good. And that was the thing. And you wanted to get the girls, yeah, right? Yeah. So. So they made sure the girls came, and uh, they were they were gonna come anyway. It was the '80s; they were there, yeah. man. But uh, yeah, so that was sort of our stick, and and um, yeah, we would just jump around and Killer. act silly, All right. and it was fun. 
All right. All right. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I, I want to go. I want to pause there, though, on this yeah. timeline, if we can. You said you have a wife. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, when you mentioned your wife, you got a little twinkle. Uh, you you <laughs> yeah. love your wife. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a little woman. bit about your wife? She's from Glendale, Wisconsin. Oh, good, yeah. good people. So yeah. Wait, that's, so that's how, that's how you're. <laughs> Nicolet, you're, you're, that's my connection. That's your market connection. Yeah. 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 Okay. I've been coming here for 20 plus years. When you, when you met her. Yeah. Or how did you meet her? Yeah, so this is another great story. Okay. <laughs> I have no doubt. I have right. no doubt. <laughs> okay, so this was after this. So I'm in L.A. and I've done it all and I'm getting no breaks. I'm, I've auditioned for everybody from Lee to Ford, um, you know, you name it. And I just wasn't having any luck. So I moved back to Lake Tahoe because my daughter was born. Hmm. Became a father and owned a construction business. I owned a uh, garage door business. And that was my side gig because my dad always told me, hey, you got to have something to fall back on if you're not going to make it as a rock star. So I learned to install garage doors in, in Los Angeles and made a great deal of money. So I did the same thing in Lake Tahoe, got my license, started a business, had a child. And then as life has it, we got a divorce quickly after that. So we, uh, we ended up divorcing and I became a single dad at that time with, with my child, Alicia. Um, and... Uh, I took a job at Harris Casino as a stagehand because I wanted to be around something musical. Right. And uh, my, my plan was to go back to L.A. with my daughter because I was then going to go to engineering, recording engineering school. What happened to the garage store business? I it? sold it. I got rid of it right before I met my current wife, now, Lindsay, because I, I was, I was going to move to L.A. When I got divorced... Um, I was devastated, man. It, it, that was another thing. It just, it just pulled the rug out from underneath me. I, I had my child, and I loved being a dad so much, and I, I loved the whole thing, and it just was, and I'm very passionate about when I do something. Um, I put everything into it. I just don't kind of do it, you know, and I put everything into that marriage, and, and to this day, we're, we're great friends, and she's a great mom, and, right and her and my, my wife, Lindsay, they're, they're very tight. And so it, we, I made sure of that, but it was a hard thing that happened to me. So I sold the business and I was just going to get out of Dodge, out of Lake Tahoe and, and give another, sh give LA another shot. Cause I was in Tahoe for, you know, a few years after I moved from LA. It was 90s, 80s. Yeah, it was 99 or 95. My daughter was born. So in 98, I was going to uh, take off and go back to LA. So I'd spent all my, you know, time in, in, uh, in the Valley and yeah, I just had a lot of, all of my friends there that I had more stuff in common with and, uh, it was time to do something else. So I took a job at, at Harris, um, as a stagehand and the touring production of Greece was coming through town where these young actors and actresses were coming through Lake Tahoe to land for, I think it was a month, um, or it may have even been longer. Um, and I had at the time, you know, all my tattoos and I used to wear a pompadour and I thought, oh shit, I'll be great at this. You know, like, what, what, what can I do? It's Greece. I know Greece, you know, <laughs> and all these New York kids come off the bus and I was like, wow, these guys are all really cool looking, you know, and, and, you know, they just had a swagger about them. And, um, and I was anti everything. I never, I didn't go out anymore. I was just all about my kid. And uh, they had a big party, a meet and greet for the crew to meet the cast of Grease. And Chris Latham, I told you about earlier, I, he was in town visiting me. And I said, hey, there's this party tonight, but uh, I don't want to go. You know, I'm just going to hang home, be with Alicia. And, and Chris says, no, dude, you got to go to this party, man. You're just miserable to be around. Go have fun. <laughs> meet some new people. You know, get out and live a little kid and, and uh, I'll take care of Alicia. So he babysat Alicia and I went to this party. And earlier that day, I met some of the, the, the cast and they were rehearsing and they all had wigs on. So you didn't really recognize any of them at this party. But there was me and the other stage hand went and there was a group of people sitting there and they sort of waved us over to come sit next to them. And Lindsay happened to be one of them that was sitting there and we just 
we connected and cool. we, we just became really good friends on that whole nice for you know what probably should have been just a night of everybody just hanging out turned out to be me meeting people that to this day are still in close in friends. my life yeah yeah, yeah. So, how long was the stint of greece at the i think it was a i want to say it might have been three months it was the okay. whole summer i have no idea how that whole scene yeah so they were just there. doing night after night yeah. there and uh and it was really cool for me because i had connections to jet skis so we would all go out on the weekends or days off we'd go out on lake tahoe lake. and go on a boat or go to jet skis and at the time i rented a cabin that was like right on the lake as well you know so kick ass yeah All right. the stabbing cabin <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All right. oh but it was good man that's my that's is she is she still in the entertainment world too? so no she's not anymore although she did uh you know moved to LA, did voiceover and acting for quite a long time, but um, she got more into the other side of it. She loves to write. She's an amazing lyricist and uh, likes to write poems, and, and her passion became fitness and, and health cool. and, and, and that, yeah. So that's her. That's what, brought what, her back to, what brought her back to Wisconsin? Her husband is gone constantly. <laughs> and, she was, and, and she was born and raised? Yeah, here? she's born and raised, and she's got her mom here. She's got her brother here as well. Okay. And uh, her brother Noah and uh, his wife Amy own uh, a trio jewelry there at, on uh, Water Street in Third okay, Ward. Okay. And uh, as you know, uh, as you know, I was gone so much. We thought, well, it might be best for you when we moved to Nashville, Tennessee, is where we live now. We were a uh, drive to Milwaukee. So when I go away on tour, she would come back here and stay with her mom in Glendale. Because uh, you know our parents are getting older, and yeah. it's nice to be around to help them. So as that happened. You know, then COVID hit and the stay in in Wisconsin stayed a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we realized um, she'd like to be here. So we Airbnb our house now in Nashville when I'm off tour and I came here. And then that's when the motorcycle journey begins. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> well, nice right. segue. Nice, nice segue. Yeah. But before I even good. ask you about motorcycle journey, uh, what, what is it that you like about Milwaukee? And I'm not, and again, I'm not fishing. Actually, I'm, let me rephrase that. What yeah. do you think about Milwaukee? Yeah. Because I don't, and I don't want you to tell me what you like. Just tell me what you think of it. No, it's I'll be completely honest with you. It was always a place that I was always wondering, like, yeah, it's cool. I get it. But I, there's something that I wasn't getting, you know, and we would come here quite a bit. And I think it was just a lack of, like, trying to find our, my people here. I right. hadn't found Trying them to yet. find a scene. Yeah. And, and so I would come here constantly and we would do always family events, but we'd go out to bars, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, quite in. vibrating mm -hmm. with me, you know, cause I was such a West coast dude, you know, yeah. it's where I lived. Right. And um, mm -hmm. it wasn't until I got on a motorcycle and rode around Wisconsin where I went, wow this place is insane yeah. it's so beautiful and then meeting the community evolve around motorcycles was amazing i mean mm -hmm. so i met you guys mm -hmm. just because of two wheels mm -hmm. it's awesome that's all well and good let's talk about rock and roll yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's do it man. let's talk about rock and roll i mean <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about we'll talk we can wax poetic about yeah. wisconsin and milwaukee and motorcycle stuff but I want, I want to hear some I want to hear some rock and roll stories. Yeah, I whatever want to, you want. Man. So, <laughs> oh, I did, didn't even did, tell you. you I'm have not did, into Alice Cooper. I got a yeah. ton. I have a ton of questions. Yeah. I, I don't I want. I want, your, I want to steal you. I want to keep you. I want to steal your fire. But well, like, Scott, I'm just like mm, Scott. You, 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 do you need some paper and pen? <laughs> <laughs> it's all up here, he's, man. Chuck Scott. He's got this, man. His stories are just gonna come. We just need to like, you know, Go ahead. Well, then, Scott, what's what's burning? Okay. How did you? What? Okay. The '90s, the '80s and '90s. Yeah. Uh, you, that was a that was a magic time in the in the music world. Yeah. There was yeah, there was the hair metal scene, but there yeah. was a lot of punk and thrash yeah, happening yeah. at the time. Yeah. Uh, the you know Metallica was birthed at that yeah. time. Slayer was birthed at that time. Yeah, uh, so, and you were in Velocity. Yeah. And then uh, Are you summarizing here. Are we <laughs> no, no. no. Yeah, he's, but we but so so what then? What happened? So when I, okay, here's what happened. So I, the, the little gap missing is when I ended up meeting uh, Lindsay and I ended up taking my daughter and I, we moved back to Los Angeles, right. which was 1998. Okay. So my daughter, barely three years old, not even three. And I packed up the U-Haul with my 64 Cadillac in the back 
and we moved to Los Angeles. Your Cadillac towed the U-Haul. Yeah, he <laughs> should have. <laughs> we moved to Los Angeles, man, with a yeah, – I'm going to give it one more try. I'm going to go do the music school or the engineering, recording engineering. Get Got a single apartment. My daughter had the bedroom. I slept on the couch. Uh, hired a babysitter. One girl constantly would come on nights when I would go to school. And then uh, during the day, my, my daughter would go to either preschool or we would just hang out. She's three years old. So we're super bonded, her and I, man. We, we have the best time to this day. And um, so anyway, I auditioned. At that time, I was going to engineering school. I auditioned for a band called L.A. Guns. They called me up. I got the gig. All right. So in 1999, I'm going to spend my summers on tour with L.A. Guns, Great White, Rat, and Poison. It was sort of the resurgence yeah. of awesome. these yeah. 80s bands, yeah. right? Yeah. And everybody's going, yeah. well, this sucks because they're not alternative and heavy mm -hmm. enough. And I'm thinking, this is going to be rad. This is my first time on a tour bus. Um, I asked them, you know, hey, what's the pay like? And they're like, we don't know. We don't know what we're going to be able to even pay you. And I'm like, all right, sounds good to me. <laughs> let's go, you know, and let's do this. And let's do it. So my mom came into town and she stayed with my daughter. My sister came in to help her. They stayed with my daughter as I went on tour with LA Guns. We opened for Great White, Rat, and Poison. I did three months of that and it was awesome. Those guys were great. I met some of my friends to this day, CC and all those guys are all really good friends. And I made $700 in three months. <laughs> <laughs> right? And they decided they wanted to re get the band back together. They wanted to get the originals back together because there was this resurgence of 80s bands now making more money, especially when you had the original band members, which made a lot of sense to them. Mm -hmm. Me, Thinking that I only made seven hundred dollars in three months, thought, well, I, you know, I'm going to need to get a job anyway. This isn't going to work for me. But I still always had that hope of getting another gig. So they fired me and said, "Hey, sorry, I hope you get another gig." And I said, "Yeah, no, I've never kind of been afraid. I'm not going to get another gig." I was like, "Cool, man. Thank you for the opportunity." And then about six weeks went by, and this was a call that changed my life. It was Windy Dio on the other end of the phone who said, hey, I got your number from this guy, Chris Leahy, uh, says you're a bass player and you're out of a gig and we're auditioning bass players. So Wendy Dio was Ronnie James Dio's wife and manager. Uh, I knew everything that Ronnie did. Fuck yeah. I was a massive fan. Dude, my hair is standing up right now on my arms. I was like, oh my God. This, I get this, the, is, this is even a, this is a yeah. cell phone or a landline? It's I a wanna, cell phone. Okay. It's a <laughs> cell phone, <laughs> and I get the gas. call, and I'm, I, I could tell you it was at a bank in the parking lot, and I stood outside of my car <laughs> digging for a pen and paper to write down everything on the hood and you know trying to be cool and and yeah 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 so she gives me a list of songs to learn which were like seven tunes i knew every single one of them just from hearing them or knew exactly kind of how not exactly but how they kind of went wait and for, just to yes. pause for a second yeah in the timeline so that dio album had come out and it dio, and, yeah and dio was already big at yeah this he was time. huge so right? at the time when i got the audition for dio he was on to like evolution which was uh, a later record that came out in the 90s. So okay. we, Dio had already had Holy Divers. Right. In, when did that come out? In 83. Oh, shit. That, yeah. That oh, dude, yeah. So after Sabbath, after Rainbow. Okay. I mean, yeah. the guy's like the guy. Yeah, he's the guy. And I was thinking, wow. I, I was thinking, wow, it's just going to be great to actually sit in a room and jam with him. And it was Ronnie James Dio, Craig Goldie on guitar, Simon Wright from ACDC on drums, and Scott Warren on keyboards. And um, I got the audition, and I was up against Bob Daisley. Do you guys know who Bob Daisley is? No. no. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> this dude's a monster bass player. Bob Daisley's the guy who played in Uriah Heep. He's the bass player on all of Blizzard of Oz, Diary of a Madman. Uh, he wrote right. all, all right. that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. from Quiet Right. No, that's Chuck Wright. Got it. Bob Daisley is a monster. He's the guy, man. I mean, if you go back and listen to Blizzard of Oz or Dire Man, man, that, okay. that's the guy. Listen to those bass runs. He was my guy. I'm thinking, oh, there's, I'm just going in for the audition. Right. right. Bob can play anything. Well, it turns out that Bob was overplaying. I went in and played everything like the record, and Ronnie loved that. So we played the songs, 
and then we were done. And I'm packing up, and Ronnie says, hey, uh, what are you doing in November? And I said, I'm around. He says, you have a passport? I said, yeah. He said, all right, we're going on tour with Motorhead Man of War <laughs> in Europe. Fuck yeah. I've never even been out. I've, I've been to California and Nevada. Mm -hmm. That was it. Well, I, I guess I did that tour. I was around the United States. Um, so anyway, he said, uh, yeah, we'd, we'd love to have you. And it paid a lot more than $700 in three months. And I got my own hotel rooms and I got per diems. And I was just thinking, this is amazing. The only problem was is that I didn't have a passport. So I immediately <laughs> ran to the, <laughs> to the post office, I think it was, and got my passport. Um, took the photo, did the whole thing. Then got my car and literally just lost my mind. I couldn't believe that Kick I just got ass. a deal gig. And uh, so... Got my, you know, shit together, um, and I'll, I'll wrap this up pretty quickly, but, you know, I, uh, I got a phone call from Wendy a, a couple weeks later and going, hey, I need your passport information, and I just happened to get my mail, and there it was, right? Yes. September 12th. I need the issuing date. September 12th, I told him. <laughs> it was that day. <laughs> she was like, what? And, no, and I was thinking, oh, God, they're going to know that I didn't have one. But they never said anything because I have it. Here it is. And uh, back then it was cool because you get uh, your stamps when you travel the world. So that's where I uh, – we had a couple rehearsals. We only had – I would say we, we – I would say we only – had about five or six rehearsals with, in, in, in the in, States in, okay. with, with Dio, with Ronnie and the guys. And they were all – very calm about it and i'm a nervous wreck i'm thinking what, what am i doing i don't even know where i'm going to denmark i don't even know what i do what do i do what am right. i doing so we get off the plane we get into our hotel room first guy i meet was uh and is my best friend of this day is mickey d from motorhead he goes hey ronnie who's playing bass for you where's jimmy jimmy bain the original and ronnie goes no nah, jimmy's not doing it it's this guy chuck and he goes, hey, Chuck, I'm Mickey. Nice to meet you. And I was like, nice to meet you, too. And I was thinking, nobody even knows who I am. I got to prove to these people that I can do this. First show, Denmark, Copenhagen. And uh, I asked, we had sound check. And then I asked him, hey, what? <laughs> What's the intro, man? I mean, what are we doing here? How do we get on stage? Like nobody. What's the wait, is it? Told yeah, what's the was setup? Is it an arena a or was it a, a like a stadium it was a, show it was a, it or was a festival? Like a hall. So okay. it's probably like you know, three, four thousand kids there. Kick ass. But it's a metal crowd, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm in California, bro, and there's metal is dead in '99, 2000. Yeah, yeah. It's it's alternative rock. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's like, Dio, dude, what are you going to go do? Kill a dragon with a sword? I'm like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be awesome, man. I mean, come on. And, and so metal was alive in Europe. I mean, like, there was a serious heartbeat. Yeah. And um, uh, so I asked him, hey, and the first song of the set was called Evolution. If you know the song, it's the bass and drums started out. do 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 da da do da da do do da da do right and the guitar comes in and um ronnie goes oh yeah uh there'll be a uh sound effect lights will go out sound effect and you'll hear this girl scream and then simon will hit the high act count you in and then you come in just like rehearsal kind of thing and i'm like well where do i stand because <laughs> <laughs> are there flash what do i do no it was just and I, I was so so i just the lights went out i ran straight to the front of the stage put my foot on the monitor and i just stood at the drums like this all the time i was out there way too long <laughs> but i was ready <laughs> and i just stood there because i didn't want anything that went wrong to be my fault right yeah. I didn't want anybody looking at me going, dude, where you, you know, bro, yeah. where, what happened to you? I thought you were a pro or whatever. So I was ready and the Simon kicked it in, man, and we rocked it. And Fuck that yeah. was it. And it was rad. And I'll, I'll never forget that, that moment. And Ronnie would come over and flip his mic stand, you know, over my head, and do the metal thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're just like, I felt like I could. Yeah, and the, <laughs> crowd's, anybody, and the crowd's dude. just like oh, losing their crazy. minds. Yeah, 
They're Ronnie all James Dio. crazy, and they're yeah. all like, we don't know who you are, but you're red. Yeah, fuck yeah, they're so stoked. <laughs> How yeah. many pairs of breasts did you see at the first <laughs> concert? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see, you've seen them all, the same ones are in Sturgis, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, those yeah. are the same boobies. How many pairs of undies with phone numbers <laughs> written in There was a lot of that on that L.A. Guns. Yeah tour i mean everybody was trying to relive the the yeah. 80s you know <laughs> but they're all moms and you know <laughs> nothing wrong with moms but everybody's no. having a good time yeah. man and it was definitely a lot of people reliving those, those days so that tour so those bands all playing together were, were you guys partying a lot like was it what was like what was after On the, the show run? like yeah yeah there was a lot of that i yeah. mean you got the motorhead guys and uh, and we didn't hang out with the Man of War guys at all, but you know everybody everybody loved to have a good beer. I mean, I don't know if anybody's been to Europe before, but it's different there. Yeah. You know, especially in those days, there were no cell phones, there were no there was no internet, there was nothing. So we'd everybody just gathered and sat at the bar and and um, and uh, you know we would yeah we would party just, we would have fun. I yeah. Mean, but you guys the, you guys are professional at this time. Yeah. At this point yeah. in your career, you're not you're not throwing TVs out of hotel no, windows. No, no, because at that time now what's happening is there's this era these these guys like myself, um, and I think I would want to say like uh, Tommy Aldridge or, or Rudy Sarzo is sort of like the first hired guns, right? I mean Rudy Sarzo played with White Snake and Ozzy and Quiet Riot and you know all these guys. He was somebody that I looked up to. Um, so we were, I had always a, uh, something to prove. I couldn't let my guard down. I couldn't be the you drunken had, you had to, idiot. You had to keep a clean resume. I did. Cause if you screw up on this deal tour, then you, you know, you might here's my involved. chance to do everything that I've wanted to do my whole entire, the only thing I'm good at. <laughs> <laughs> right i mean yeah i was gonna yeah. go to recording engineering it's like hey, it's all i'm okay i'll figure it out no big deal yeah i owned a garage door business and it was good workout and all that stuff but i wanted to play rock and roll man right. you know yeah. and i wanted to do it because i had a kid right. and i wanted her to i wanted to be able to look her in the eye and say go for it when that opportunity comes your way do it right do it i did it and it's going to be risky and it's going to be tough um, and it's going to be scary and it's going to be exciting. And I want to just tell you that, you know, you, there's no such thing as failure. You know, that was my thing. I was just, it was my parenting rock and roll was my parenting opportunity. <laughs> right on. Bold statement. Wait, we were just talking about this earlier. I was listening yeah. to the trap set podcast that Joe Wong yeah. does on uh, W on MSE. Yeah. I think it's syndicated, but he, you know, he was talking about, he was talking to this guy who was this. Actually, it was the tables had turned. A drummer was interviewing him. Yeah. He usually interviews drummers, uh, and I can't remember who it was. The guy was in Super Chunk. He was in the Mountain Goats. He was oh, in wow. a bunch of bands. But anyway, they were talking about luck and yeah. how that plays into it. And, and they were, but they kind of went on the rift on how like, y yes, there's luck. Absolutely. But you also have to have the ability when the opportunity comes along, to say. Yeah. Hey, can you play bass? Can you got yeah. a passport? Can you go on tour? Yeah. And you'd be like, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, but you actually be able, need to be able to do it. Everything that you do is it applies to now. Yeah. Right. So ev no matter what you do, like I, Dean Taba, my bass teacher, always told me, "Hey, be careful what you play on your instrument." I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Even when you're practicing or fucking around or whatever, that is vibrating out into the universe." So you only want to put something out there that's good, right. that's that, meaningful, right? So right. anything. So I was like, whoa. And at that time, I'm 20 what, or 30, something like, I don't, okay, yes, yeah, peace, bro. But I get it now. You know, it was one of those things I had always done, which was even though I felt like, oh, I'm never going to get a break or whatever, I never really believed that. I just wanted to make sure that when my time when came, when your opportunity came, when my opportunity came, I was ready, ready. And I realized that I still had a lot to learn. You know, here I was with these guys. I mean, Ronnie was in Rainbow, Black Sabbath. I mean, his own successful career. I yeah. mean, I I had to be there for him every single night. And yes, we partied. And yes, I was hung over at times when we played and thought to myself, oh my God, I was born Catholic, dude. I'm constantly guilty of, you know, I'm like, <laughs> no, I can't do this, man. I'm going to get in trouble. You know, I got to be good. So, so I, you know, I, um, I really watched myself, but yeah, I had fun. Hell yeah. Kick ass. I'm with Motorhead, dude. Like Fuck that yeah. was my favorite band. Yeah. Kick ass. Yeah. Wait, 
I, I don't want to deviate too far. <laughs> yeah. But when you're playing a Dio show back then, yeah. you're playing. So are you playing Rainbow songs? You're playing Sabbath yeah. songs? You're yeah. playing like Holy Diver? Yeah, yeah, we played all, all the. We played it. We played all the. Um, um, the, some of the not all, but a bunch of the Rainbow stuff. Of course, yeah. Man on the Silver Mountain. Yeah, and yeah. Long Live Rock and Roll. Yeah. And we played uh, Neon Nights. Uh, oh God, I love that um, show. What else? Mob Rules. And then we did all the, the uh, hits from uh, Holy Diver. Yes. Gypsy and all the rad stuff. All it right, was cool. killer. Yeah, all that stuff. I mean, uh, Heaven and Hell. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so good. Hey, one night we were playing, and it was there's no in ears in. It was just monitors. You know, you're playing, and there was a, every time the drummer would hit the snare, it'd go kaka 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 kaka. It would bounce yeah, off yeah. the walls, right? <laughs> so I'm going do 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 kaka 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 And I'm just like, oh man, I'm just got my head down. You're trying to keep and my track. Think my toes are into my <laughs> boots. I mean, that's the stuff you don't realize what's going on upstage you know people are entertaining you right these yeah. musicians but what's really going on in our minds and our bodies is you know we're we're feeling this music we're mm -hmm. trying to create it and we're dealing with issues right you know right. Uh, there's things that are happening yeah. around us that are that are you know that the sound is shitty or whatever sure every room has its own audience. yeah every sound man is a different yeah, mix or some sort yeah yep, yep. yeah What's a, what's a good stage story of like someone falling <laughs> off the stage or like somebody walking up to, like to take a, a little bit of take a, a rock and roll fantasy <laughs> yeah. here? Is that Scott's a punk rocker, dude. Man. I, I just love, love it. this He's shit. I just love this shit. Bands. Yeah, I I read the Tony Iommi biography when I was in Mexico yeah. this winter, and it just it just didn't do it for me. Did it's you like, ever hear of a band called Seven Seconds? Yeah. yeah so dumb. they were called Urban Assault before they were Seven Seconds. Right. You're from and, Reno. And I grew up in Lake Tahoe, and they used to rehearse down oh, the street from me. All right. And I used to go over to their house, and I would sneak because in Tahoe it was like house, a uh, lot with pine trees, and then house, and then lot. So I would sneak through the lot, through the trees, and I would go and I would sneak and and I would listen to their up my head up against the wall of the garage when they would play, <laughs> and then they were done, and I was still there, and then they they came out, and I took off running, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, what was his name? Troy Mullet was the drummer. Hey, little Chucky, <laughs> get over here, little Chucky. <laughs> he said, you know, and I run. Ah, awesome. Kind of scary. Yeah, those guys, man. That was that was my just uh, punk your, your rock introduction story. to punk rock. What yeah. are what are the other big Tahoe bands besides Seven Seconds? Um, There's a lot, seven right? Seven Seconds. <laughs> yeah, there was. Well, Tahoe's you know, not really a town. I'm, I'm not disrespecting it. Not of a course, music it's a town. town, but it's a tourist town. Right? Yeah, so it doesn't right. have a heart. You know the guys that right. came out of Lake Tahoe. You know, with myself, and then you got Sean Palmer on snowboard, Glenn Plake yep. skis. Those okay. guys were the those guys were the ones that put Tahoe right. on the maps with yeah. the snowboard. All the skaters. That was the big thing in Lake Tahoe is skating and okay and skiing, snowboarding. Yeah. Let, let me let me pause for a second. How are we doing on time? Are we okay on all this? Yeah, we're good. We. Uh, Damn. Okay. Well, we we I need another hour. We need another okay. hour. <laughs> well, well, so well, I, no I pressure want to, here. I, I want to. Whatever the fuck. I'm not, I'm not wrapping this up, but I but I, I want to make a connection here, and that yeah. is that okay. We we started this whole thing out with you're with Alice Cooper. Yeah. So finish. You know, not as an intense detail, yeah. if you will, but a, a skim over. You you finished with Dio. How did you connect? Actually, finish up with Dio. Yeah. How do you connect with Alice? Cooper? Okay, so I finished the Dio tour, and then. They uh, were going to go do the U.S. dates, and in the U.S. dates, they used Jimmy Bain, the original bass player <clears throat> that Ronnie had with him because Jimmy didn't have a passport to go <laughs> over the, the Europe. So that's how I ended up getting the gig. So I ended up doing two years with Ronnie. We did uh, Europe twice and then Japan. I came back. They were going to go do a U.S. tour and use Jimmy Bain. I got a job at a recording school in post-production. Uh, at a recording studio, uh, I got a job in post production, which was mostly like voiceover things like that. So I had this job. I'm done. I've done my thing. I'm happy. I got my kid. I'm gonna teach her. I'm gonna coach her soccer team now. I'm toured. I'm man, right on, Chuck. You did it. And then I got the Alice Cooper call, and I auditioned for Alice Cooper, and I didn't get it. It's funny you mentioned this guy. So. I auditioned and I was went up against Chuck Wright. And Chuck got the gig because okay. Chuck had a lot more touring experience than I did, which he did at that time. Great bass player, great guy. They hired Chuck. Wrong guy for the Alice Cooper gig. Just didn't fit in. So a year later, Alice and the gang called me, said, hey, 
will you you want in? We we would like to have you as our bass player. I said sure. So I met Alice Cooper. Uh, first time I met Alice was on Fox Television. We were doing three songs. Never met him before. He comes out in his makeup and top hat and cane, and and I'm playing You'd schools never out. Had a never met him. Just I never even jammed with the band, dude, except for that rehearsal and sound check that day. Yeah, and that no was, way. That was years yeah. prior. That was yeah. how long. That was. So I had a year after they uh, um, they didn't hire me. A year went by, so I kind of already knew that, the that's songs. That's so fascinating about show business. It is the professionalism that you're expected to keep. Yeah. It's juxtaposition by the partying that we think, but yet fly you to wherever L.A. Yeah. With just a bass, you plug into an amp you've never go. plugged into, and the lights turn on, go. Hit it. School's out. Be great. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck up. It's like, you know, like uh, I was talking to Michael Lang the other day, great builder here and racer in, in Milwaukee, and I was over at uh, Graybeard's shop, and and uh, and Eric made a comment. Uh, he goes, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? And then they were getting ready for the race in Plymouth, and Michael Lang goes, uh, Ride fast, don't fall down. <laughs> I started laughing because that's it. It's like, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're, you are just, expected just to, do, to that. do that. Yeah, yeah just, just do that. that. Hey, yeah, just yeah. be How great. Hard can it be? Know yeah. the song, kid. You don't know the song. Well, you, you're in the wrong in place. Position. Yes. So it's just about like, it's you got to have a level of confidence and arrogance and, and just be naive enough that, you know, you're... Uh, Look, man, as a bass player, I'm constantly watching and watching and listening. Mm -hmm. I have to. I have to know what the guitar players are doing. I have to listen to the drummers. I have to listen to the vocals because everything is just, I'm cued off sure. of everything. Bass and drums stop, that's a wrong note. Guitar stops, you think it's artsy. You don't know, you know? So it's, and I'm not saying to take away from a guitar, guitar player, but bass player just has a different job. Right. So I, I did my songs with Alice and the guys. We sound checked them. That was it. And I was completely blown away by that band because those guys just knew everything. They were just all walking jukebox, man. They could play any Cheap Trick song, any, you know, Mott the Hoople song, any David Bowie song. And I, just, I, I didn't know that stuff, you know. So they were way light years ahead of me. So I, I was another thing where I just put my head down, did my thing and did the show. And then Alice said, so uh, looks like and Chuck Wright had the gig before me. And then Alice said, so I guess you're the right Chuck. <laughs> and uh alice is known for having he's, like the, the band like he, yeah his dude. band is top notch there's no dude. fucking around there dude everybody that's played like i he's i eric singer is now in kiss mm -hmm. tommy clefettis with black sabbath and ozzy osbourne was on drums you know um there's a number there's a bunch of them that went on to do great things and still are doing great things i mean the current band we have right now with Tommy Hendrickson and the Hollywood Vampires and Ryan yeah. Roxy and Nita Strauss and Glenn Sobel. I mean, all monster musicians. Yeah. Monster. So we're just a fucking force when we hit that stage. Yeah. You guys were there. Absolutely. Yeah, it was. Do you remember that was, show, Warren? You think yeah, like you were having that. a good time? <laughs> you, I, you know what? I fucked, I fucked that up, man. I should have been down there way earlier. I, wait, I waited till like the last three. Yeah. I was trying to be nice. Yeah, yeah, I think that's when they start letting you guys come down. It was weird. It's in the theater, so it's like a seat. Yeah. You can't get into it, but first person down was Warren, man. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't help it, man. So, like, I, I was I wasn't there. So you rushed to the front of the stage. I, no, saying? I didn't rush. I I waited for my time. When I heard, I couldn't wait. There was like, I don't know what song. What was, it was your but song? What's what's your song? I don't even know what it was. Or or something, Some, right? It was. I was down there for elected. It was like two songs before elected. I think. Yeah. Oh, it was. So it was probably escape. I don't know. No, what yeah, escape. Then we do escape. School's out and elected. Yeah. It's probably school's out. Yeah. So I, I just like weasel my way down there. I've ducked down. <laughs> lost like two feet and i just weaved my way down to the front and made sure i was good and just stayed low until i didn't stay low you know and then i i was there <laughs> kind of hard to hide when you're warm you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly i noticed it right yeah. out of the yeah. bat yeah. <laughs> yeah and so you've been on tour with alice for how many years 21 then? wow so what's a what's a What's a working life of touring with Alice Cooper? What's, yeah, it, what's it's, it like? It's great. Yeah, he's the nicest guy. You guys are like constantly traveling. Constantly. You guys, what are the details? What you know? What's a, yeah. what's a day to day like travel? Is well, it with Alice, you know, he's a um, he's a sober individual, um, which makes it very nice. He yeah. is not an egomaniac. Uh, on stage, uh, you know, as you can, you know, we have monitor guys and lighting guys and front of house guys, and he thinks they're just all there to hang out. He has no idea what the monitor guy even does. I mean, he does, but he, he never breaks character to go, Oh, 
can you turn my microphone up? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. I can't yeah, hear but, myself. But he's, wouldn't, wouldn't, he's, he doesn't care, bro. The microphone could be off all night, <laughs> and he does not care. He will not break character. He right. loves what he does, and right. he is a constant professional. One night, and I know we're, I could talk forever. Do it. One night the, 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 at one venue in Europe, the stage roof – Okay, so if there was a fire in the building, the roof opens up to let the s- smoke out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's their safety mechanism. Well, we've got fog machines. So the fog machines set off the smoke alarm. <laughs> the roof opens. It's raining outside. <laughs> so the only thing that's getting rained on is the stage we're playing. <laughs> And it's dumping, dumping on us. And everyone thinks And everybody's is- going, what the hell's going on? So Alice is looking. He's still singing. And we're just getting wet. So they stop the show. And we all go and we hide. And Alice comes and he hides behind my, my cabinets and stuff. And he's standing there. And I'm looking at him. He goes. And then the, the, the roadies are out there mopping and cleaning up the thing. And they're trying to get the, the roof closed. And Alice looks at me. He goes. And I go, what's up? He goes, they should all have masks on. I go, what? He goes, the audience doesn't know this isn't part of the show. <laughs> That's how that guy thinks, right? right? He doesn't get mad. Right. He thinks like, yeah. oh, man, we missed an opportunity, yeah. right. right? So a day in life with Alice is we, we play lots of golf in the morning. So we'll get up, we'll play golf, man. I know it's not very sexy. It's not like, you know, That's we're awesome. but he mandates it. Everybody, let's go. Dude, he's it's one of those things like where six like six AM tea time. Mm, seven, seven thirty oh. we'll play. But when I first got in the band, you know, a lot of us were all excited and he's so easy to you know, hang with that we would, you know, obviously be drinking and, and, and staying up late. But when golf came into the picture, it was a nice way to, you know, get to bed at a halfway decent time and not overdo it. You know, sure. still do it in moderation. That's a secret but agenda. Here's the deal, man. We we get along really well. So <clears throat> there's a group of us, Alice, myself, his assistant, Kyler, and our guitar player, Ryan. We love to play cards. And uh, Cheryl, his wife's on the bus. So there's five of us on our own tour bus. We get on the bus after a show. We play poker till, you know, 1230, 130 in the morning. Uh, laugh, have a good time, get up, play golf, take a nap, go to sound check, do a rock show. That's it, man. Okay, and we're, and we're, and so it's where, awesome. Where's the travel in that day? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. So we end up on it. We're on a tour bus, and we sleep on it. So you drive through we, the night. We drive to a hotel room in the morning, get off, change, go play golf, <laughs> then come home, stay at the hotel room at 4.30. We go to sound check. We sound check. Mm-hmm. We eat. And then uh, I go on the bus and and do my thing. I, like I said earlier, I like to have my alone time, meditate, just chill out for a little bit. Um, and then I um, pack a little lunch or dinner from catering, go and put that on the bus, and then I uh, go get ready. I put on my tight rock and roll pants, mm-hmm. my <laughs> eyeliner, which I told Eric Lund, Graybeard, one day. He said, what are you doing, man? I go, I'm putting on my eyeliner. And he goes... I never thought I'd have a friend that would tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I, yeah, so we do that and Show we go business. rock, man. Yeah, and we go have a great time. And like I said earlier, this band is on fire, man. It's it's yeah. a lot of fun to yeah. play with these guys. You can we, tell. You guys look like you're having a great yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you mentioned early on that, that being on the road is, is, is boring or you can get bored with it. Yeah. And, uh, and it does, yeah. if you're doing that same thing and yeah, traveling exactly. and, you, and you can't really make connections with yeah, people and meet new people at yeah. a deeper level. Yeah. So it's interesting to see how you, with, you pass your time with meditation, uh, cards, yeah. and building a community on the people on the bus. Yeah. But I want to zoom in a little bit more with, uh, with, with, with just for example, just, just food. Did you guys have to pre-order your stuff, or is it already there? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, like all this minutia. Like they it's, carry, it's they, they, they hire a catering company. Okay, and at then, each and, gig. At, they sometimes travel with the tour or at each venue. Uh, okay. So they'll show up early, have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They got breakfast, lunch for the crew because they're there at 830 in the morning. They're setting everything up. Right. So you saw the show, all those yep. screens yeah. and the rigs all and all the, that stuff. Yeah. And riggers. And they, they, these guys are these guys are amazing what yeah. they do. Right. So they are there at 830 and they, they stay till the show's over and then pack it all up and put it on the bus again. Their job is in grueling insane yeah. Yeah. long hours and those dudes party 
<laughs> they, they'll go right they don't go right to bed man they stay up and they don't play cards either they'll sit there and just drink beer right. until they, you know and just they have fun man but they're on the days off the they're at the bar in the okay lobby. all right yeah you know, we're like oh i don't want to get too drunk yeah. <laughs> so how many people on, the, awesome. on this crew how many people we got about 25 of us 25 people yeah. coming like, yeah so there's one... four tour buses and and two or three semis that's really impressive yeah that's awesome yeah very yeah. cool. Lots of, you know, putting a lot of people to work, man. Yeah. It's good. And it's like family. You guys are just see like each family. other. You're, just, you're yeah. cheek to jowl every day. Yeah. Which sometimes can get a little bit, like when you're a guy like myself, a hired gun, and you're, you know, you're in bands with guys that you're, you you have to be in a band with. And, right. And this is what I was talking about earlier was I think I, I started to have this, I used to get a little moody or grumpy because I was just, something wasn't right, man. You know, I wasn't having the fun I should be having. Right. You know, it was getting grueling. I was getting something was going on and I needed something to change my, to change my way of thinking. I needed a reset, man. Do you so, take a bike on tour with you? or Hardtail you, you sportster do? chopper. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, it was, it, I just wanted to learn why because real quick, just to kind of jump ahead, but it was when I was on my motorcycle on that Triumph and I'm thinking if it does break down, the only thing I know how to do on this motorcycle is where the gas goes, where the oils goes, and I'm pulling in the clutch and I'm shifting gears, but why? Why is it shifting gears? And what if this breaks? And how does this starter work? And what, what you know, I, I wanted to know these things. And that's where I, when I was riding the motorcycle, I was thinking of the mechanics of this machine. Mm -hmm. And and why is it doing what it's doing? I always I was so curious about that. And so when I I made a point of it to go, oh, I'm gonna build a bike. I wanna know from ground up how this all works. Mm -hmm. And that's where it all started, you know. Is this bike finished? It's almost there, man. Okay. It's all almost right. there. I got. Can you sit on it and make the sounds yet? I can sit on it. We're fabricating the uh, the rear fender now and the sissy bar, and uh, we're we're we've got everything ready to go and 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 wired up, and we'll be have that thing running in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. How long are you in town for now? You're gonna. I'm here till the end of July. So you're gonna you're wow. gonna have it done in a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna have it done. That but thing should wheelie pretty awesome. So <laughs> it's gonna be fast, man. It'll <laughs> definitely have good to torque out. right yeah. out of the gate. Yeah. Warren helped me out, man. Warren came in and and helped me uh, with, right. the, with the with the welding of the of the lead sled hardtail. We hardtailed this thing and killer. It's 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 a beast, man. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And and the cool thing about building a bike is, you know, there, yeah, I'm thinking of you know at times I'm decorating the Christmas tree before I even have it in its stand. You know, that's yeah. like kind of like Barbie for a so yeah. yeah. So we all do. Yeah. That's part and, of it. And I don't, I know nothing. I'll be honest with you guys. Like I really knew nothing about how it all worked. I mean, I knew a little bit about mechanics, but I remember, you know, cause I work and have been working with uh, Eric Lund over at Greybeard Motorcycle Service in Mononymy and so false. And so we would, he would, he said, look, I'll, I'll help you build your chopper if you help me in the shop. And I'm looking around at all of his old pan heads and survey cars and i'm going yeah okay no problem and so we would take apart a, a transmission there and, and i i oh and i go whoa wow and he he looked at me like what do you mean i'm going i always like i saw a video of this but i've never actually physically touched this or saw it right mm -hmm. here there it is in front of me i just saw this you know this primary from this sport this soft tail or whatever here i am Touching it and figuring yeah. it out. Yeah. I st still don't know that much. It, you know, I I uh, I am not afraid to say that I've made a lot of mistakes. And and I <laughs> my favorite one is you know we had to put an offset sprocket on my Sportster chopper that I'm building. I go yeah oh, yeah I put it on there. I put it on and whirl it on up there and Eric goes ah, you put it on backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep, yep. sure <laughs> yep. did. <laughs> but guess what? That was my first time yeah, putting yeah, one exactly. on, man. Yeah, so I have 50-50. It's a 50% chance of doing it right, yeah. We love your stoke, and I'm sure Grey Beer, love, Grey yeah. Beer loves your stoke. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's, He'd rather be around the stoke than some yeah. know it all. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's it. I love that. Yeah. The stoke, man. Yeah. That's good, because yeah. I am definitely stoked. I can see it. Let, let, let me. We, we're, we're gonna. We gotta conclude. I'm sorry. Yeah. We was making a two part. I got Yeah. We got, <laughs> I got a couple questions. I, I think I can also see your stoke for your new band. 
Yeah, I'm stoked. I'm stoked, man. I, like I said earlier, that life has been good to me and motorcycles have come into my life and <clears throat> give me a new fire. And I've got a great band, Bisto Blanco. Which is what, White Beast? Yeah, White Beast. And we, we, I had a big, this white boxer dog, you know, and I called her the White Beast of Bisto Blanco. She used to be so sweet, but she was just this menace. And um, I got uh, Calico Cooper in my band, Alice Cooper's daughter. She sings and, and, and just a force to be reckoned with. That girl is an amazing performer. Chris Latham uh, on guitar, on the growl, on, on um, bass from Germany. And then Sean Sellers, who plays drums in Good Riddance. Mm. You know who they are? They're a punk rock band. I Look them up. they're from Austin or, uh, or the West Coast. I, I, think they're, I think they're West Coast guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Santa Barbara or something like that. But anyway, those guys, and we just signed a, 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 to a label called COP International uh, where we're releasing our fourth studio album. Kick oh. ass. Yeah. Yeah. Did, this, right. did this band tours? Yeah. We Is mostly this, go over in Europe. You know. Are you bus level? Yeah. You were touring a van? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Way after Alice Cooper and I was not having that. Man. I'll be, I'll admit that I'll do it. I done it, but it's, you know. It's different. It's different, well, man. When would yeah. you have toured in a, in a van? Huh? When would you have toured in a van? With with Bisto and we done. Oh. We we opened for a hellstorm and uh, and then we did our own club dates throughout the U.S. And, and we did it. We did it in the van. And, and then we did Europe in the van, too, as well. And. It's it's fine. It's good. It's a good way to cut your teeth. I mean, I, I felt like I had to earn my your way. teeth have been cut. Yeah, I still I still feel like I have a lot to prove. So okay. I was like, oh, I'll ride in a van. Then I'm like, fuck, man, we gotta get more. Money. <laughs> 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 I gotta figure out a way to get some more money, man. I am not into sleeping, sitting yeah, up. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Where are my golf clubs? <laughs> <laughs> T- tell me uh, about rock and roll. Uh, Again, it's it's not what we think it is when you pull back the curtain. But is there some kind of a retirement, or is there something that rock and rollers have that uh, they can fall back on when they're in their when they become elderly and the infirmed? Is there yeah? Is there is a, there a post- union? Yeah. Is there a union? Yeah. Is there something? Yeah. Fuck yeah. No. Is there a We're Columbia so, Records like so poster screwed. club that we can yeah. you know the yeah. subscribe to? Yeah, right. There, and it, it, this is another subject, bro. We are not looked out after. There is no sure. union like for us. Like the WWE wrestlers. Yeah, and uh, I learned that, and I did not come from a family of you know this is what a four hundred one k is, and you need to invest and all that stuff. Uh, I learned at a at a later time in my life when I did get into the Alice Cooper band that, hey, I, I need to start investing my money because uh, God bless all these guys. They're not looking out after my future. You know, mm-hmm. they're not taking care of me. There's, I mean, there's sure there's residuals. You, you know, you make your money on writing songs, but songs don't sell like they used to. And when you're uh, Aerosmith or Alice Cooper or Black Sabbath and these guys that were successful in the 70s and the 80s, sure, you're good. You're golden. Yeah. You know, if you were smart with your money, right. a lot of these guys weren't, right? Because it was it's such easy money to come by. Mm-hmm. You're telling me I just got to go play my instrument and I'm going to make, you know, hundred grand tonight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is all, I can do this. I, I'll waste a hundred grand on that car. <laughs> right. And then you realize, wait a minute. Now it's gotten tougher taxes, all this other stuff. People aren't smart with their money. So I learned, uh, put money away. So I'm my own financial advisor as well, sure. you know? So that's my retirement. And, uh, and, um, yeah, but I don't really see rock and roll going away anytime soon. I get guys like Alice and Rob Halford and these guys that are getting up there. They they they, they know that they have a uh, they have a uh, commitment. They they have a responsibility to rock and roll. And, and I know Alice wants to keep going until either a they stop coming or he just can't do it anymore. Sure. So. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem like they're not coming. No, they're, they're here, man. Yeah, for so sure. It seems like he's as. Popular no, we kick as everybody's ever. ass. We open for it. Doesn't even matter what bands out there, dude. Because we, we, you did this. You did uh, something uh, in Florida, Rockville. Was, yeah, Rockville at the, the the Daytona Speedway. With and you were rubbing elbows with some contemporary artists. Yeah, yeah. Pantera you, was there with with Zach Wild and Rob did Zombie. Did you lay them to rest, or did you come? You know we what I mean. We kick everyone's ass. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> You well, can't. You cannot go out there and, and try to beat Alice Cooper. There's just no way. It's not even us. It's just his songs, his history. He's a performer. It's a theatrical show. Yeah, it's he a doesn't great talk show. to the audience. Mm-hmm. He just fucking pummels yeah, you with his rad yeah, music yeah, and he just rocks. Straight jacket yeah. and guillotine and yeah, he, he's Python. mic drop at the end. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's but, awesome. We, we were talking just a little bit about money, and uh, your story is the same as old as rock and roll or doo wop or hip hop. That there's a producer like, hey kid, I'll give you a hundred grand to produce this record, and then the record produces millions for yeah. other people. Sure. 
Yeah. Right. So you you uh, you were wise to this. Yes. Eventually, you became wise to this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, again, how are we doing? I feel like I don't <laughs> want to go time too I'm long. To fill up this card. This is a, we never almost filled the card up. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Is so, that good? Yeah. That's okay, good. dude. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yes. I love it. Uh, I have most of my my points uh, checked off. I'm glad that, um, well, first off, your Stoke is inspiring to be around, and your um, lo new love for choppers. Um, is, but listen, I, I, you know more about choppers than I do, and so I appreciate it. You don't have to prove yourself. <laughs> You're in the right family, and I really yeah. love your Stoke. Um, and I, that you're stoked on us, but you know, it's, it's residual. Yeah. We're, we're stoked I, I, on I want stoked. you guys to know, like when I met, you know, you guys, you know, especially Scott and Warren and, and Patrick from Led, Led Sled and one guy I got to always give kudos to, which we all know very well, but he was really the guy that, that inspired me was dump truck. <laughs> I met him and Sturgis and him and I just hit it off and it was on and we just had the best time. But Great dude. you guys are like my rock stars. You know what I mean? I've, I've rubbed elbows with, with the, with the rock stars, Keith Richards and all those guys. And it's great, you know, and they're, and they're awesome. Um, but when I saw when, now that I'm so into these, into bikes and how they're made and built and just knowing it. And I went to mama tried and I saw this firsthand to me, I just, I couldn't get enough of it, you know, and I still can't. So it's 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 a newfound love, and you know it's one of those things to where I just think there's such an art to it, and, it, and it's such an individual thing you're looking at. Yes, it's got this engine in it, but everything else about it is so unique and original. And I love that, and I think that's why I even got into music was because certain bands just vibrated with me, yeah. certain musicians, right? You know why was, you know. The Beatles, and you love the Beatles more than the Stones, you know, or whatever. It was just, or you love them both for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm finding in, in motorcycles. And I love telling people about it because they either get very worried for you, <laughs> you know? Yeah, oh, or they... Oh, no, you're... Oh. Yeah, they, when you, when you yeah. tell them like, you love motorcycles, they get worried for you. Yeah, they just yeah. go, oh, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're dangerous. Yeah, don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, they are dangerous. But you know what? Uh, so is, you know, walking the dog, mm -hmm. like exactly. Al Pacino would say. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just feel like there's – I don't look at motorcycles as a thing for me to be dangerous on. I look at it for me as, as another way of expressing – my personality and 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 expressing uh, my desire to not just sit and be cool with who I am. Yeah, yeah and I want to fucking learn new shit. Alongside of that, you gain a community that you yeah. didn't know was there. Yeah, kick ass you know? community. Yeah, yeah. And I, that Stoke is like you know, it's what when we see little kids at Flutter Friday or at Mama Tried, and they just. Yeah. You can just see that that hook's Dude, been I'm gonna set, tell you something. and they're going to like, they're I love just going to be into it. I did the flat out Friday last okay, yeah. at, at, no, at no, Mama's Drive with the, the boonie bikes. Bike. Okay. He called me up. He goes, hey, you want to go on a boonie bikes? I'm like, yeah. And I had to look up boonie bikes. Okay. What the <laughs> fuck's a boonie bike? Here, I'll do it. And I'm sitting there going, oh my God. And oh, it's just for fun. Stout told me. Don't worry, it's just for fun, man. Really, we're going to make it a comedy show. I'm like, oh, thank God, you know. So I'm talking to uh, Patrick from Lead Sled. He goes, oh, dude, so you, you ready to do this? Like, yeah, it's just for fun. And he looked at me like so disappointed. <laughs> he goes, hold on a second, bro. He goes, you need to go out there and fucking win this thing. Just don't tear a hamstring, he said. <laughs> and I said, wait, man. He said, I go, maybe I should tear the hamstring now, right? Finish hurt, start hurt and finish, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I said, he, but he was so like, no, you need to go out there. And I'm like, no, Cat. no, no. It's just for fun, right? So we all get up there. Hey, everybody's having a good time. This is cool, right? And then as soon as those bikes went up to the front of that <laughs> line, dude, I looked over. Dude, and everybody's like. Uh -huh. yeah, right. and I went, oh, oh shit, shit, this is real, man. <laughs> and even I felt it like I'm yeah, like, okay. Yeah. And I never even ran a bike around a track like that. And not that we were going fast, but there was, it was fun. It was there so was some fun. adrenaline yeah. going. Yeah. So, yeah, there's. That's awesome. There's no. I love Pat. I could just see his Pat just like his oh, question chain just being like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. Come here for a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to win, bro. <laughs> Like, all right, Pat. All right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, let's let's uh, let's conclude, and we have to remind uh, listeners that are still standing. Is anybody <laughs> yeah, still this is standing? this is 
this is Chuck oh, Garrick man. from the Alice Cooper Band. Yeah, we man. just had a lot of fun. Yeah, and, uh, it's been a blast, man. I feel I like we should co- we should come back for um, the Encyclopedia of Rock Part Two. <laughs> we need more uh, SIM yeah. cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell when you're on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You can subscribe on uh, Spotify and Apple Music. Is that correct? Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And reviews on Apple are important. And yes. reviews are out there. Yeah. Yeah. Reviews, please. please. Review us, yeah. and, and even just a general dialogue. Yeah. On, yeah. On, uh, things. Ask us some questions. Yeah. That Talk we've some heard shit. Today. Yeah. Okay. Suggest some guests. Let's hear it for Chuck. All right, Chuck. Chuck. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, yeah, honestly. Yeah.